Hi everyone, welcome to Swift Arcade. I'm your host, Jonathan Rasmussen. In this episode, we're gonna take a look at something called the UI Pan Gesture. This is a really cool tool that lets you do a lot of really innovative, powerful techniques. And we're gonna look and see how to use it when building some applications. We're gonna start with a very simple demo that shows you the basics of how a UI Pan Gesture works. In this case, just moving a blue square. And then we're gonna move on to a much more advanced case where you can use it to build a really complex, rich animation. In this case, a view that pops up from the top and actually handles the scrolling and the scrubbing and keeps the animation in sync with the gesture. All right, let's begin. All right, so the pan gesture is part of a series of gesture recognizers built into UI kit for us. This is your tap, your pinch, your rotate, your swipe. And these are all different things we can do in the UI to detect how the user is interacting with our apps. You basically use them just like any other uh, target action that we would add to a UI control. But basically they give us a whole bunch of information. They can either be a continuous or discrete callback into us and they communicate via these things called states. Let's take a look at an example. Okay, so this first example we're gonna look at, this just tracks our presses on the simulator and moves this blue box to wherever we press. And the way this is set up is this is using a pan gesture recognizer. So here it is, pan gesture recognizer. We create it, we add a target to it, just like our regular target action would on a UI button. And then this is just a regular view controller. And here I have just set a uh, something called my view, which is a blue box, given it a height and width of 100, just put it on the screen. And the real magic happens in the action here, handle pan. And what you can see here is in the recognizer, when we call or invoke this, we get back the view that it was tied to. So sorry, I should have shown you one more line up here. What we do when we create this pan recognizer is we add it as a gesture recognizer to whatever view we want to register for that tap in our app. So in this case, because it's a blue box, I want to be called when I tap this so that something can happen. That's the line that hooks it up there and then down here, when we get our recognizer, we can pull out the view that was associated with recognizer. In this case, it's gonna be our blue box. And there's two pieces of information that the pen recognizer gives us that others don't. It gives us a translation and a velocity. So if I just open up the debug console right now, you can see when I drag this around, it is giving me or it's telling me what the translation is or how I'm moving this box in terms of the XY coordinate system. This is the origin up here and it gets larger as I go down this way, larger X, larger Y. And then you can also see that it communicates to us what state it is in. So the recognizer can either be in the begin state, that's the very first tap here. And you can see as I move it around, it's in changed. And then when I let go, it is ended. And basically the two important pieces of information here are translation and velocity. Now why that's gonna be important is later on when we look at a more advanced example, we're gonna see how we can use the pen gesture to flick or detect which way someone is going. And that's built into a lot of iOS applications that are really nice and important. So you can flick a page in one direction or the other. And it's this gesture and this information that allows us to infer whether they're going one way, flipping to the next page, the next UI table, or back. Let me show you what I mean. I found this example online by Nathan Gitter, and this is a beautiful example of how pan gesture recognizers can be used with UI animations to build some really cool uh, effects in iOS applications, like this pop-up. Down here we have basically a pop-up that you can tap and bring up and down, or you can also swipe. This is using the pan gesture recognizer, and there's a whole bunch of beautiful affordances going on in here. For example, notice how reviews is in a lowercase uh, label here. And as we drag it up, it grows and morphs into a bigger font. Also, look at how the corners here start to round as we drag this up. And then finally, you can see the darkness or the opacity. There's an overlay behind the scenes there that also animates. This is using some animations and pan gesture recognizers to swipe up but also it syncs the pan gesture with the animation so you can scrub and it remembers where you are. 
There's a lot of magic going on in this demo, and this is why I love it so much. It really shows how much thought and care can go into building these applications. Let's walk through Nathan's blog post and break this down and take a look at how it works step by step. Okay, so the way Nathan starts off this demo is he doesn't actually use a pan gesture recognizer, he uses a tap gesture recognizer. When you tap here, it takes a gray view, which is pushed down 440 pixels, and it raises it back up. So just simply tapping this changes the layout constraints of this view and moves it up and down. So he does that basically by just having a few enums that track the state of the view. He then uses a uh, tap gesture recognizer to basically uh, track or receive that event when someone taps this. And then down here, all he's doing is he's using a uh, animator, a UI property animator with a duration of one and a damping ratio of one so that when you tap this, it basically just changes the bottom constraint of this view. So when it's open, it's zero. When it's closed, it's suppressed 440. And then when that animation completes, he has a callback here that you can do on this translation animator that basically just flips the state. So if it was open here and we close it, now it sets the state to close. And it also changes the constraint so that um, it can keep track of whether it's open or closed. So that's just using a tap gesture recognizer. No panning here yet. But let's go on to the next step now and see how Nathan improves on this. Okay, so the touch gesture was okay. But what Nathan really would like to do is not only touch down here, he'd like to be able to flip or pan up using a drag like motion. So this is where the pan gesture comes in, lets you swipe up and down. So Nathan replaces the tap gesture with a pan gesture. And all the codes exactly the same. The only thing that changes now is we go from a discrete event, a single tap to a looping pan. So as we loop here, we are going to get continuous information about the x and y of the gesture. Now he doesn't use that here. All he uses is the state. He just tracks to see whether we began, changed, or ended. And for now, that's all he does. He just gets this in there. He lets you swipe up and down, but it's more of a panning motion, and he likes that more. And we'll see uh, what we can do with that in the next step. Now, one problem with having a pan gesture and an animation is right now these are not tied together meaning the animation happens regardless of how far we're panning. So to fix that, what Nathan proposes is we can track the state of the pan gesture and tie it to the animation by calculating a variable called fraction complete. So basically what we can do is as our gesture recognizer is changing uh, up or down, we can calculate its translation y and figure out you know, where it's going in the translation we can then uh, normalize that with respect to the animation and then tie those together. So that's basically what Nathan does with this logic here. When we're in the change state of a pan gesture, he calculates the fraction of the pan by getting its translation y, and then he normalizes that, dividing it by the pop-up offset, or those 440 pixels. So what that does is that it takes the height of our animation, 440, it normalizes it or maps it to the pan gesture, and then you can actually set a variable called fraction complete on a UI view animator. And that's how the animation knows how far to go while it's animating. So now when we use our pan gesture and we swipe up and down, this is what lets us scrub this. So now we can flip it up, we can uh, flick it down, but note how the pan gesture is tied to the animation. That's what happens with this line of code here by normalizing it capturing fraction complete and setting it to the animation. All right, let's see what we can do next. So as good as that pan gesture is, one thing it doesn't give us is what we had at the very beginning, that tap like or button gesture. We can't tap this now. This is just a pan or flick up. What Nathan proposes next is we actually subclass and create our own uh, instant pan gesture recognizer by extending the UI pan gesture recognizer. And what this basically does for us is this gives us the tap capability. So instead of it just being a pan that flicks up and down, now we can also tap our view 
and we get the, the best of both worlds here. We can tap and we can flick, and that's a really nice human gesture that's uh, very intuitive and easy for everyone to understand. And while our tap and flick gestures are great, one thing they don't do for us is if we start flicking up, but we change our mind, we, we can't bring it down. In other words, it's not respecting the direction of the flip flick, and it's not letting us interrupt this as we go. So what Nathan proposed next is we can basically conditionally reverse the direction of our flick if we don't go by some threshold. And basically this is gonna depend on a few factors. One, the current state of our pop-up, two, whether the animator is reversed or not, and three, the velocity of the pan gesture. And this is where we really get to the interesting stuff. This is where we can start taking into account velocity and direction and more intuitively decide whether to flick up or down. So the way this code works is down here in the pan gesture end, we set up a few variables. We set up a velocity from our gesture recognizer, the direction that we're going in Y. We have a variable called should close. And then we basically do the following. If there's no motion, we can just continue with our animations and exit early, meaning they just simply flick up and they're done. Nothing to do there. If, however, we go through there and we realize that they didn't quite pass that threshold or they didn't want to flick up all the way, here's some logic, very clean, a little bit complex, but very clean, that Nathan came up with to figure out when to reverse the animation. So basically on the state of whether it's not closed, whether it is reversed, and whether uh, the pop-up is currently open or closed. Now you can flick up, but if you change your mind or you wanna keep it up, uh, that's okay too. It'll respect that. And using this logic now, it's a much more intuitive, natural gesture that it's taking things into account in. And that's how we can reverse the direction of the flick as we're going. All right, in the latter stages of the demo, this is where Nathan really improves the uh, beauty of the app. In this case here, what we're doing is we're simply rounding these corners. So you can see how they're a sharp edge here. And as we scroll up, those will animate into being nice rounded corners. And that is very simple. All you need to do is take the view that we have here, our pop-up view, grab its layer and set its corner radius to either something rounded like 20 or zero, depending upon whether the state is open or closed. And when you include this in your UI view animator, it simply animates it for you from one state to the next. So a really nice transition there from straight to rounded corners. Next, Nathan adds some things to make it more pretty. He adds a background image, an overlay, a title label, a subtle shadow, and some sample reviews. So now when we tap or swipe up, you can see this is starting to look really nice. This is our view animating up, doing everything uh, we talked about, scrubbing, and just making it look more pretty. One thing you will notice here is when we drag this up, this label looks the same in its collapsed and expanded state. Nathan thinks it would look a lot nicer if we could somehow animate that label. So that's what we do here. Because there's actually no way to animate a label, Nathan comes up with a really clever uh, scenario. What he says is we're actually gonna have two labels and we're gonna swap one for the other. So basically when we're animating, we're gonna have a closed title that we are going to use a CG affine transform. And what this is, is this is a function that can do a variety of things. It can rotate, it can scale, and it can reset uh, an image to its original state. So what he does here is he says, I'm gonna take my labels and I'm either gonna scale them up or down depending upon the state we're in, while also changing their alpha from one to zero, blanking them in or making them come out. So that's what enables it to look like this now. So now instead of having the label stay static, when we tap on it, we can see how it grows into something bigger. And then it replaces that label with the smaller one when it shrinks down. And that's all done using these animators. In the final step, because Nathan is a really pro, he notices that UI view animation only has one animation curve. And sometimes you want to do a series of animations, each with their own curve. For example, he would like this label to have its own animation curve and not necessarily have it tied to the other one. So what he does in this case is he creates two new animations, one for animating the new label in and another for animating the old label out. And that's why if you look at the source code, you'll see an array of animations in there. This is how he keeps track of them all. He also sets this scrubs literally to be false on the inline title animator. And this is a property that basically doesn't tie the animation to a linear animation coming in. 
it instead animates it to the easing curve. It's just a slightly subtle different animation curve, but these are the types of details you can really get into if you want these things to look absolutely fabulous. So now when you run the full example, you can see how great it looks. You simply swipe up from the bottom, it animates the labels in slightly differently and a slightly different cadence to the panning gesture that's going on. And you'll also notice there's an overview that darkens the opacity of the background image there. So really beautiful example, really nice demo that just shows how much detail you can put into all this stuff to really make your apps look great. Everything you're seeing here is based on an example from Nathan. He's got a really nice blog post called Building Better iOS uh, App Animations. And here he gives a really nice thorough walkthrough of uh, explaining how the animation and pan gesture works. And this is what I really based the example on. I just went through his blog post here. And I learned a lot by doing that. I really encourage you to go up, uh, read the blog post yourself, and you'll see a lot of the thought and attention to detail he puts into building this application. Well, there you have it, a quick whirlwind introduction to the UI pan gesture working with the UI view uh, animator. It's a really beautiful, cool tool. I actually really wanted to learn this technique because I have something else I wanna build later and I didn't know how to do it, but I think this pan gesture recognizer is gonna help me. And if it works, I'll show you later. But anyways, that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed that. Until next time, bye-bye.